as you know, cancer is the second leading cause of preventable death here in the U.S. And last week, CNN put out an article highlighting a recently published study finding that about 40% of all cancer deaths are actually preventable, meaning that lifestyle conditions that you have volitional choice about whether or not you engage them or not or avoid certain substances like smoking or being sedentary, etc., alcohol consumption, really impact the prevalence of cancer. And about 230,000 lives every year could be saved if people changed their lifestyle because these lifestyle conditions that we're going to get into, particularly exercise in women, this is really important. You know, I'm very biased and pro-exercise, but it turns out that exercise is more protective against breast cancer in women and women who don't exercise are at higher risk of developing breast cancer and other cancers compared to men. So let's dive into it. The title of the article from CNN, I'm not a huge fan of this network for obvious reasons because I feel like they're not totally objective in their reporting, but I think this is actually a good piece titled, Nearly Half of Adult Cancer Deaths in the U.S. Could Be Prevented by Making Lifestyle Changes, Study Finds. Now, we know that obesity is a risk factor for cancer being sedentary, smoking, drinking alcohol, uh, and they say UV exposure, like sun exposure, increases risk of melanoma. Now, this is really interesting. They also get into HPV uh, and HIV and so forth. But the peer-reviewed study that they are highlighting here that was published in May, this was by folks over at the CDC and the American Cancer Society, uh, as well as Stanford University. Uh, this actual analysis is titled Proportion and Number of Cancer Cases and Deaths Attributable to Potentially Modify Risk Factors in the U.S. During the Year 2019. Okay, so they highlight this in the order in which lifestyle changes can help save lives from cancer. They say uh, the lifestyle factors, cigarette smoking and secondhand smoke. If you smoke or vape, please stop. If you're living with someone who smokes or vape, please consider changing your living situation because uh, both secondhand smoke as well as direct smoking is really bad. Excess body weight. You know, there's a big push to say that you know, there's this, you can be healthy and fat and we shouldn't fat shame and, and we should normalize the increasing body weight of individuals. Um, I, I don't think shaming people into becoming lean is a good tactic, but I do think it's important to highlight that, you know, obesity is a disease. We should really figure out why people are getting overweight and give them uh, sustainable solutions to improve their body composition. So I agree with uh, this analysis. Uh, alcohol consumption. Alcohol is something that I gave up in uh, late February 2023. I've had one glass of wine over the past 490 some odd days. We know that alcohol is not good. Uh, obviously, uh, alcohol consumption is linked with gastrointestinal cancers, liver cancer, throat cancer. There's a whole litany there. Alcohol may accelerate cellular aging, uh, may uh, impair your cognition and, and sleep. There's a lot of deleterious effects of alcohol. So minimize your alcohol consumption. They do talk about uh, consuming red meat and processed meat, and uh, this data was conducted uh, using the NHANES data set, I believe, so that's uh, really, really interesting. Low consumption of fruit and vegetables, dietary fiber, uh, physical inactivity, UV radiation, and carcinogenic infections. So we're going to continue and dive into this. Just want to say thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below, because I don't know about you, but I'm hearing so much more about young people getting cancer. And this is really, really scary. So that's why I keep putting videos out like this to help influence people to make healthy lifestyle changes, to avoid smoking and vaping, to exercise more, to sleep better and, and beyond. And it seems that metabolic health is woven into the initiation and progression of cancer. And so we talk a lot about metabolic health, a tool that can help you support your metabolic health. This has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for the better part of 3,000 years is known as berberine. Berberine is one of the most effective natural supplements on the market. There's been numerous human clinical studies that find that berberine helps support metabolic health. It may help with cravings. Uh, I found this anecdotally. It increases ketones. It helps with appetite and satiety. There's a lot of great benefits from this. And Unlike many other supplements that you take, you can actually test this in real time. If you have a glucometer at home or a ketone meter, you can see berberine working about 90 minutes after you ingest it, around 750 milligrams. So over at Myoscience, there is an amazing berberine that has over 300 reviews known as the Berberine Fasting Accelerator. You can take two to three capsules in the evening time, especially if you're having a long, stressful, hard day and prone to having cookies or ice cream or crackers that you know will derail your metabolic health, but you crave them. And so this may help uh, you know, with that changing your lifestyle habits 
and averting the temptation to overindulge in foods that derail your metabolic health. And so you can see what many other customers over at Myoscience are saying about this unique formulation by going to myoscience.com or click the link in the description below and use the code podcast to save at checkout. So Let's get back to the study and talk about what they found. They said in 2019, an estimated 40%, that is 713,000 of 1.7 incident cancers and 44% of all cancer deaths in the U.S. adults aged 30 years and older were attributable to evaluated risk factors, meaning that these fat risk factors that we're going to get into, smoking, being sedentary, you know, not having enough uh, fruits and vegetables, having a lot of processed meat, alcohol consumption, things like that are totally preventable. Now, cigarette smoking was the leading risk factor contributing to cancer deaths as well as cancer cases, about 19 and 28% respectively. So again, out of all the cancer deaths, smoking is attributed to 28% of them, which is insane because we all have tools now. There's tobacco-free nicotine, there's you know, programs to help with smoking cessation. Now, following that is excess body weight, contributes to 7% of all cancer deaths and 7.6% of all cancer cases. Now, this is really important because the legacy media, health pundits are saying, well, obesity is a genetic condition. You can't really do much about it. But we know that people uh, that have similar genes also have similar lifestyles, similar food preferences, similar unhealthy food choices. And so we have to look at the lifestyle element of obesity. Alcohol consumption contributes to 4% of all cancer deaths and 5.4% of cancer cases. And when it comes to lung cancer, the highest number of cancer cases and deaths were attributed to uh, risk factors that are modifiable, uh, as well as female breast cancers and colorectal cancers. So let's go through this list. And I think what was interesting is when they talk about alcohol consumption, and you can see here, figure two, I believe, um, shows the prevalence of lifestyle factors and how they contribute to uh, different types of cancer, cancer of the anus, cancer of the larynx, uh, cancer of the mouth, the esophagus, and, and beyond. Uh, many of these are preventable through lifestyle changes. Um, so I think that is quite interesting. But if we go on down to uh, the, dis the discussion element of this, excess body weight, as I mentioned, uh, contributing to a significant amount of cancer cases, cigarette smoking. And when you pair all these modifiable lifestyle factors, uh, decreasing alcohol consumption, reducing smoking and tobacco use, increasing physical activity, decreasing increasing obesity, um, having healthier diets. We're talking about 40% of all cancers, four in 10. And because cancers and early onset cancers are on the rise, this information should be shared. So I appreciate you sharing this with people who may benefit here. Now, if we scroll down to page 10 of this report and highlight physical inactivity and its effects on both men and women, which are different, the investigators say physical inactivity was the sixth largest contributor to total cancer cases in men and the fourth largest contributor in women. 4.4% of the cases were attributed to physical inactivity in women versus just 1.8% in men. And this means that for women, exercise is disproportionately more protective than in women compared to men. And I think this is really important. If we talk about the specific cancers, we're talking about breast and colon. And just so you know, those comprise about 30,000 cases uh, here in the US of cancer in just women alone. And so I think this is really important that we recognize that at physical activity and exercise is particularly important for women in the context of preventing both breast and colon cancer. Now, you might remember the video we put out where we talked about the Warburg effect. We talked about how different tissues in the body in the context of cancer growth and, and, and formation and fostering of cancer that uh, certain tissues will anaerobically ferment glucose even in the presence of oxygen, which is uh, really characteristic of, of this Warburg effect in cancer. And so the different tissues are, we have lung, we have pancreas, we have breast, we have the brain, and we also have uh, colon. And so I think this is important to understand, and this might highlight how the metabolic state of cancer is different in different tissues. And so for women, because, you know, cancer of the colon is, as well as breast is susceptible to this Warburg effect, which may foster cancer initiation and propagation, that exercise and a low-carb diet as well as fasting might be helpful. Now, let's go on and talk about alcohol consumption. I think this is important because many people recreate with alcohol uh, and consume alcohol. Well, it turns out that alcohol consumption was the fourth largest contributor to all cancer cases in men and the third largest contributor in women. 
Again, so exercise is the fourth. Alcohol is the third leading risk for, or contributor to uh, cancer in women uh, and fourth in men. So a little bit of a flip there when it comes to alcohol consumption uh, and cancer risk, but I think this is really important. How many people socialize and drink a bunch of wine and beer and cocktails and go to bars and, and all that? I, I think we should all be a little bit more mindful about how much we drink, the frequency and the volume of alcohol that we consume, and the types of alcohol, because we know that alcohol is enriched in glyphosate, which is the uh, herbicide that is uh, particularly problematic for the microbiome, for the immune system, uh, particularly beer and canned products have uh, possibly BPA and other phthalates and other uh, endocrine disruptors, which could increase the risk of breast cancer and colon cancers and other cancers. What I think what was interesting about the diet changes is there wasn't a huge correlation with total meat intake, uh, but it turns out that uh, having low fruit and vegetables and having high amounts of processed meat were linked with um, stronger prevalence of cancer. So uh, we hear all the time how red meat will rot in your colon and give you colon cancer and things like that. But uh, red meat was closer to H. pylori and HIV and having other infectious agents that are linked with cancer, whereas processed meat and low fruit intake was closer to physical inactivity in terms of its effect. So in conclusion, smoking cessation, losing body weight, minimizing or reducing your intake of alcohol, uh, as well as increasing exercise and having more fruit uh, and reducing the amount of, of uh, processed meat that you have tend to have the biggest effect on preventing cancer. And women are more impacted by the lack of physical activity than men. And I think this is really important as well. So exercise, please stop smoking and vaping or being around secondhand smoke. Minimize alcohol consumption, uh, eat a lot of seasonally available fruits, uh, avoid processed meat, and stay away from infectious agents like uh, HIV and Epstein-Barr and beyond. So hopefully you found this information helpful. I'm grateful that you tuned in all the way. I will put these uh, articles in the links in the show notes, and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.